Merry Mead, it is Nina. You're watching Fairy Chamber channel. This video is going to be a remake from one of my older videos that was about Estonian Earth Belief. Uh, the audio wasn't working that well, so I thought I will film this whole thing again. And when it comes to Estonian Earth Belief, I think my own personal worldview compared to like all the different pagan paths in uh, Nordic countries and in Northern Europe, my personal pagan worldview is probably most closest to Estonian earth belief, Mausk in Estonia. So I'm a Finn, myself if someone didn't know that. <laughs> in Finland we have Finn belief. Uh, definitely I have been <laughs> very much affected by Finn belief because I practice shamanism. <laughs> and um, it's, it's very important to me, but then uh, the way Estonians approach religion overall and the way they see Mausk, something else than a religion, that's something that really speaks to me and it's more close to my personal worldview than Finn Belief or anything else. What's great about Finn Belief is that, like I have stated in many of my videos, uh, this idea that Finn belief and Finnish paganism in general it is not deity centric, it is nature centric. Well, Welsh nature behind me, not Finnish nature, but still there is that essence there. Nature is the divine. And it is the same in Estonian earth belief. And if you research any Uralian pagan worldviews from Finno Ukrian people or even from the Baltic countries, Romuva and uh, Latvian and Lithuanian beliefs, the pagan beliefs, there is extremely strong nature worship there underlying behind all the deities. But anyway, <laughs> let's get into Estonian earth belief. I'm going to talk to you about Taraism a little bit as well. They are both connected. So uh, Estonian and uh, Estonians and Estonia as a country is well known that it is the most atheistic country in the entire world. Uh, my mom back in Finland, uh, she is what we Finns call Estihulu. She is nuts about Estonia. She travels to Estonia at least once a year or twice in a year. She loves Estonia. She speaks Estonian. It's quite rare in Finland in fact. <laughs> my mom, she loves Estonia and when I still lived at home many years ago we traveled to Estonia quite often and Tallinn is one of my favorite cities in the world. I love the history and the medieval things there, everything and handcrafts. Estonians they do so well with all handcrafts and arts, artsy stuff. So. <laughs> And what I've heard, they are planning to build a train tunnel between Helsinki and Tallinn. I'm so excited, I really want that. Because um, in the long run, train tunnel is going to be much more environmental friendly and generally Baltic Sea, it's really polluted. So I, every time if I like um, take a plane to Estonia or fly there or take a ship, I feel guilty. <laughs> train would be much more eco-friendly and faster. <laughs> yeah, getting off topic here. But, uh, really, I really love Estonia, <laughs> especially Tallinn. And uh, one of my favorite pagan shops of all time in all words is in Tallinn. It's called Loitsukellari. Loitsukellari, the spell seller. It's really great. And um, yeah, I think the Estonian people that I know, my few Estonian acquaintances, they're either atheists or they're like uh, spiritual people. <laughs> and uh, in 1994, 65% of Estonians believe that trees have souls. I don't, I don't believe that this figure has changed that much within past. 20 years or so. 
and um, yeah, quite recently there was a research and 54% of all Estonians described themselves as spiritual. And the thing is with Estonians and uh, the idea of religion, Estonians really dislike the word religions in general. They don't really like to be categorized to any religions, except the 15% of Estonians who are Russian Orthodox or Christian Orthodox. But that's like a totally different thing, because rest of the Estonians are atheist or describe themselves as spiritual. And I think in this case, even the atheist Estonians, most of them are atheist pagans, if we really like to research more deeper. And why do Estonians don't like religions? Well, probably because Estonia it has been under ruling, uh, ruled, ruled by Denmark in the past, and ruled by Germany, and ruled by Soviet Union. Uh, what the Germans did, they wanted to convert Estonians to Christianity, which they really disliked. And uh, during the communist era, all the ritual religions were banned. Uh, this also included the folklore pagan beliefs. So uh, this is why the word religion, it usually for Estonians means something that tries to oppress them or something that is even connected to violence. So Estonians don't really like to like religions if it's not uh, Maosk, which is really is more than religion or it's not really approached as a religion. I get into that later. So there's two major pagan belief systems in Estonia. These are Mausk and Tarausk, also known as Tarapita, the god Tara or Tarapita. And this religion, <laughs> it was created in the 1920s and in the 1930s by some Estonian intellects and uh, sophisticated cultural people who wanted to create a national religion to Estonia. And Estonia became independent country in 1928, and ten years after that, in 1938, Tarausk was established and it became quite popular. But Tarausk itself, in the beginning, it was not really a pagan belief system, it was really more to create this kind of national religion. And the pagan elements, they were seen quite barbaric, so it was really more about like uh, creating almost a new age religion about uh, Estonian mythology and Tara it's really like a thunder card inspired by Perkunas and Thor and Taranis and so on and yeah there's lots of different characters in Estonian mythology as well but that's what how this a religion was started to be formed. And I think I will make another video about Estonian mythology at some point. It's very similar to Finnish mythology. The poems, especially the oldest ones, are quite similar. And it's really fascinating to research, but I will do that at some point when I do more research myself. And anyway, so Tara was, it was really this kind of um, attempt to create a national fate for all Estonians and it did became quite popular but then during the Second World War by the Germans occupiers and later on the Soviet Union uh, Tarausk it was completely banned and the people who were the leading characters in Tarausk they were executed and it has now been coming back within past recent years, 20 years or so. So I don't know much about it. I and I don't speak Estonian, so it's not really easy to find information about Taraus in Finnish or in English or in German or any other language that I speak. Maybe I should start to study Estonian. 
It's another language to my list besides Northern Sunnian Welsh. Okay. But mosques, that is something I know a bit more because I know a few people who practice mosque and I think mosque is great. <laughs> I love mosque. It's a Estonian earth belief. So that's what mausk means. Ma meaning earth and usk meaning belief. It's very close to Finnish because ma usko in Finnish means earth belief as well. <laughs> so when in Finland we have Finn belief, in Estonia they have ma usk, earth belief. So from Estonia nowadays you can still find people who practice Tara usk and it is quite popular, but ma usk is definitely the most popular pagan practice in Estonia. There are also some Estonians who practice both or they combine both elements and you know uh, Estonians in general they don't really like to categorize themselves in that sense they are quite similar to Finnish pagans because Finnish pagans tend to be very eclectic. <laughs> yeah. Maus, it is like a broad term for native faith. It covers huge amount of things. No one created Maus. It is something that has always existed. And it is something that has lived inside people ever since they were... Uh, ever since the first inhabitants in the area of what is now known as Estonia. That's how old Maus is. is over 10,000 years old. That's what people believe. And it's really not seen as a religion, it is seen as spiritual worldview, both spiritual and uh, physical life. That is all Maus, they are connected, the physical and non-physical, <laughs> they are all connected because Ma, the earth, gives you your body and it gives you your mind. So it's really a pantheistic belief system. And pantheistic means that God is the earth, or earth is everything, universe, earth, God, all one and the same. So that is the essence of Maosk. And what I've researched all different Uranian, Finno Ukrainian pagan belief systems, Maosk is really the most pantheistic, and it. it when people really read about Estonian gods and goddesses and mythical characters, they are really seen mostly as metaphors, the manifestations of nature. Mausk, it is really based around nature worship. It is about celebrating the change of the seasons. It is about living together with the cycle of the year, living together with the earth, the way earth changes, the way nature changes during different seasons. It is about returning to the earth, both physically and mentally, and living in balance with the earth. That is uh, the whole concept behind Mausk. And Mausk, it, uh, the worship of ancestors, it is extremely important, so in this sense Mausk really dates back to 10,000 years all the way to totemistic and animistic belief systems and spirit world. Belief for the spirits is very strong in Mausk. The spirit for the ancestors, animal guides and all that. Extremely important. Also the oral tradition, the stories that your grandparents, your great-great-great-grandparents told to the people and really the heritage that there is in the land and all the folklore and myths about the land uh, that is all a big part of Mausk. This also includes the traditional songs, the folk music and the folk poetry. When we have Kalevala poetry in Finland, in Estonia, they have their also their own traditional poetry which also is a big part of Mausk, same way as Kaivala poetry for many Finn believers is a really big deal. And there is these myths about stones and trees, the sun and the moon and the stars, same way as there is in 
Finnish pagan practice and these are seen as something very important and they are hold as sacred stories and sacred texts and really all these rites they are for the birth, the marriage, for death. They are all seen as part of the spiritual and physical being of human beings. It's all part of life and the human life is part of the nature. You can re you cannot divide those two. When we speak about Mausk, we can approach it on many different levels. We can see it as literally Mausk, belief for the earth. See the Ma as the soil, the dirt, nature, environment, and all the sacred places. If there is a sacred place. Uh, in nature, in Estonia, they call them as hees. In Finland, we use the term hiisi or lehto. So in Estonians, they are sacred hees. <laughs> and uh, also, if it's not earth as soil or as the ground, it can refer to earth as divine. Mother earth, mausk, ma, mother. It can mean uh, mother earth. See that nature as something divine, something that bring, gives the all life to people. And it can also refer to Estonia as a country. It can refer, refer to Estonian language. It can refer to Estonian people. So there's many ways to approach Mausk. And when I read about these guidelines, how you can define yourself as Mausk, because it's really not necessarily a limited term. Because when I did the test, I was 100% mausk. <laughs> and these were some guidelines. If you respect other religions, you got, and uh, you still have your own word, you mausk. If you believe the importance of heritage, mausk. If you believe that all life comes from earth, mausk. If you believe that possibilities that there isn't just one god but maybe several gods, Mausk. If you believe that these several gods might be one god, Mausk. So it's really like a fluid <laughs> way to see things. Also, from Finnish pagan perspective, in my eyes, the Estonians they have way, way better managed to preserve their pagan beliefs, their Mausk, and their folklore and all that, the, the heritage much better than Finns have and uh, probably because in Finland the um, country has been way more oppressed by Christianity much longer than Estonia has been but it's really something that I respect in Estonia, <laughs> Estonian people overall. They're uh, strong links to the heritage. I think it's more stronger than Finns have. Uh, we are now reclaiming. Uh, we've been reclaiming quite some time and uh, it's slowly coming back. But I do think Estonians have been preserving things much better and much longer than Finns. It is my personal belief that Mausk and other minor <laughs> pagan paths that are not really that limited are the ones that most societies might learn something but definitely I think there is something very profound in Mausk it's not something that people necessarily define themselves people just see it as something that they are this is the I think in many ways it is the same in Finland the nature connection that people have, no matter are they Christians or atheists or Buddhist or Muslims or anything, if they are really grown up, brought up into that environment where nature is seen as something holy, no matter what your religion is, it's something that is like always lives in the subconscious. I think that is the same with Estonians and especially in Estonian Mausk. And there are lots of people who, in Estonia, who don't even like the term Mausk, even though if 
they define themselves as Maos because it refers to religions. <laughs> and they rather just call themselves a spiritual or atheist or pagan atheist or atheist pagans. But uh, they still recognize that it is something that lives there all the time and something that they respect and honor and they have no intent to cut cut it away <laughs> because it's very important to keep the heritage alive all the time and always and there's something very profound in it oh thank you for watching guys i hope you enjoy this and if you are more interested to hear about my experiences and research on um shamanistic pagan paths <laughs> all around the world and Estonian uh, Mahusk and mythology and Finnish mythology and all that feel free to subscribe to my channel and leave this video thumbs up if you enjoyed it okay thank you for watching guys I will see you next time bye